Well, hello, um, I am Lisa Perpich from Creative Saskatchewan, a program advisor, and we have a very special guest today, Lenore Mayer from the Garys. Thank you so much for joining us, Lenore. Thank you so much for having me, Lisa. It's a, a pleasure to be here. Oh, that's so great. Well, and I'd like to welcome all of our uh, guests today um, and uh, let you know that Creative Saskatchewan supports creative entrepreneurs throughout the entire province of Saskatchewan in treaties two, four, five, six, eight, and 10, which is which encompasses the unceded territories of the Nehawak, Anishinaabe, Dakota, Lakota, Nakota, and Dene nations and the homeland of the Métis Nation. Our office is located in the John Hopkins Regina Soundstage Building in Regina, which is located on Treaty 4 territory. So yes, thank you all so much for joining us today. Um, and for those of you who may not um, know Lenore, um, tell us a little bit about um, yourself and your fantastic band, The Garys. Okay, thanks, Lisa. So my name is Lenore Meyer. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I live in Saskatoon on Treaty 6 territory. And I play drums and sing in a band called The Garys. We've been together based out of Saskatoon since 2015. Um, it's a band that I play with my siblings. Um, so it started with me and my two sisters, and we've recently invited one of our brothers into the fold. And so sometimes we play as a trio and sometimes we play as a, a foursome. And we play kind of um, surf, alt country sometimes, sometimes some doo-wop, a uh, mixture of all those things. And we've been really fortunate to have received a lot of support from Creative Saskatchewan um, for the last several years. And um, any successes that we do have, uh, we would be very short-sighted if we did not acknowledge and thank Creative Sask for helping us um, continuing to walk forward on our project that continues as the Garys. Well, it's been a pleasure to support you over the years and watch your band grow. Um, I just want to let folks know um, that questions, this is what we're here for. So if you want to ask um, Lenore anything at all about um, um, her experience as a Creative Saskatchewan applicant and grant recipient, um, any question at all, feel free to just pop it in the chat and we'll take questions throughout the, um, the chat today. Um, Lenore, you've received um, uh, various funding over the years. Um, I want to start by asking you about sound recording and, um, you know, the point in which um, you all decide that, okay, it's time to head into the studio. Um, this is what, um, um, you know, we have in our heads as far as what we want to come out of the studio with and putting that plan together and then how you make that transition from your plan and your concept into a submitted application, what that process is, is like for you um, and how it's turned out to be successful for you. Yeah, we've been really fortunate to have received a sound recording ground through Creative Saskatchewan in 2019 or 2020, right before the pandemic really kind of hit very, very hard. And the way we, we started that was um, I, I think about it as like building blocks a lot of the time. Our first album that we uh, recorded was done at Reyes um, and there were no costs because we were recording with students. Second album that we recorded, we um, did it with money out of our pockets and as cheap as possible. And the third album we recorded was live and we got a micro grant from Sask Arts. And then the fourth album, which is the one that I've, we've received funding from Creative Saskatchewan for, uh, is called Get Thee to a Nunnery. And what our, we, we were developing a plan of what, what do we want to do with this album? And we uh, started talking about who we want to record it. And we uh, thought Barrett Ross would be someone that we are really comfortable recording with. We really think he fits well with us. And so we reached out to Barrett and asked him if he would be uh, willing to join our, our team. And he was on board with that. And then we talked more with him and we said, should we should we have a producer with this album? What should we do? Um, how can we incorporate more people into the team? And then we were pipe dreaming about having Dallas Good, um, of course, uh, join the team. And, you know, when they say dream big, I think sometimes it's uh, really worth it to do so. And so we reached out to him and um, flew that idea in his ear. And he also was completely on board. And so what we had was these pieces kind of coming together and once we had those pieces together, then we started looking for funding for it. 
rather than seeing that there's funding for an album and then working backwards. So what we did was kind of try to put those pieces in place enough so that you can, you know, you've got a project together with various partners. Um, and so that's how we planned this, this one. And um, of course we reached out to Creative Saskatchewan and that was the, the first time we had that kind of grant. And so reaching out to a program consultant at Creative Saskatchewan is such a good idea. And everyone at Creative Sask is so helpful and they can really help steer you in a, on a path for success. Um, and so we did that as well. And we were very fortunate to be able to have um, received that funding. And we had that plan in place with quotes and, you know, commitment letters and all of those things, which, which show that you're not only just the band behind it, but that the various people you're going to work with are also behind it. So it's like kind of like applying for a job and having references. Um, you're having, you're showing that you've got a team committed to it. Mm -hmm. And in a well-researched budget does so much to okay. really demonstrate to the assessors that, you know, this is, um, um, you know, that the band is really secure in what they're going ahead with. They know what it's going to cost. And if you do get the grant, an accurate amount of money will be um, committed to you, which, which is really important, of course. So as you go about the, the, the project, um, of course, um, especially with sound recording, um, you know, a timeline um, is, can, can become a bit, a bit loose, a bit vague, but I mean, as, as long as you keep, um, create a Sask informed with any extensions and stuff like that. Um, but knowing that you're going to have to report on it, um, what do you keep in mind as you go about the process, um, without it being too overwhelming? Because of course your, your, your whole purpose is to make the most fantastic album as possible in the studio, but there's still some things you need to kind of keep in the back of your, your mind throughout it. Yeah. Well, I think when you mentioned a timeline, like that's such an important piece. And of course things can get in the way that can alter your timeline. But if you have a timeline, oh, I have a puppy here. He's, he's, he's talking a bit. So, uh, sorry about that. Um, if you have a timeline, what it can do is essentially create a schedule for you when you're actually in the studio, not only before and after, but when you're there. So you can really focus on that. And um, if you have uh, if you have that laid out, it can really help you take uh, step by step in a very tangible way to reach the goal that you want to that you want to reach. And as you said, if things go sideways, like maybe your band member gets COVID or, you know, in the past couple of years, there's been all kinds of things that have gone sideways. And like you said, the most important thing is to communicate clearly with, with your funders of what's happening. I think um, that's one of the most important things uh, in my experience is just keep the lines of communication open. And if you do that, um, Creative Sask is there to support you through it. Um, and if you if you don't let them know what's going on, if there's changes and you don't let them know, you can you can it can make the, the reporting process harder for you at the in the end. So as long as you consider Creative Saskatchewan a part of your team as well, and and keep letting your program advisor know of how things are going, especially if things are shifting and changing a bit. Mm. Um, we have a, a few questions here. Um, one I'm going to answer quickly about what we look for in a well researched budget. Um, having it backed up, um, having, um, a, you know, demonstration of how you're calculating your expenses and where the expenses in your budget are coming from. Um, if you have, um, you know, $500 for work of a graphic designer in your sound recording application, um, it would be great if you got um, an estimate from your graphic designer saying, you know, the Gary's album artwork, $500. Um, sometimes some folks um, don't provide vendor estimates. Um, you know, maybe you're hiring a photographer and, you know, it's going to be $200 for a couple hours and you send them an email and say, you know, are, are you available? And they're like, yeah, let's do it this date, this time. It'll be $200. Um, you can take a screenshot of that and upload that in, in your application. But, um, you know, um, say if you're doing um, a social media campaign, like buying some Facebook ads and Instagram ads and whatnot for $500. It's like, okay, well, how are you allocating that money? Even if it's just say you do it in a word doc and, and you say, you know, Instagram, 
um, you know, $200. Um, this is, you know, my target, the, the, just a, the calculation of your expenses um, just uh, really goes to show that, um, that these aren't um, guesstimated numbers, um, that, you know, you, you have a very, very good idea of what exactly the, um, the project is gonna, gonna cost you. Um, Lenore, what's your been experience in, in putting together y your well-researched budget? I think that, well, it's definitely a skill uh, that is developed. And um, I, I was mentioning just before we started the call that the first grant that we uh, applied for as a band, we we were unsuccessful because I think there were several reasons. Um, but one of the reasons was because we did not have a lot of supporting documentation. We had sort of this idea that we wrote out in text of what we wanted to do, but we didn't really have that support of, um, you know, getting quotes and estimates from various other folks that you were work with. And so for me, I think um, supporting documentation, there's always an area for uh, any support material. And that can be kind of a loose word that can encompass all kinds of things from support letters to um, quotes for, um, you know, hotels or for um, mixing, mastering, recording, et cetera. And um, you, you, when you upload those, it really just shows that you have thought about these things and you have uh, done the research to make sure that you are aware of what that will cost and it will the more you do that the more it sets you on a track to actually hit those marks um, and it shows that you are uh, ready for the project that's coming ahead uh -huh. so I, I like to try and put as much support material as possible um, because it's really valuable mm -hmm. that's great thank you Lenore um have you, um, for, for, forgive me if, if this isn't correct, but have you brought in an outside producer ever to work on um, an album of yours, like someone not from the province? Yeah, we've only done that one time. And that was with the grant that we received, um, the sound recording grant. And um, his name is Dallas Good from the Sadies. Yeah. And he uh, lived in uh, Toronto uh, at the time. And so uh, he was able to travel here and we recorded the album here in Saskatoon with his support. So we've mm -hmm. done it a long time. So, and you were able to have like his producer fees and his travel covered. Yep. Um, and that's, that's, that's really important to, for folks to know um, because in order for the recording and the mixing to be eligible expenses within the sound recording grant program, they have to be incurred within the province and you know, of course, like that's great if you want to work with, you know, a, a producer like Dallas Good. Like, why not, right? Um, but you can bring them to Saskatchewan. So, like their airfare and their their per diems, their hotels, that kind of thing, that would be eligible. And you would do it at a Saskatchewan studio um, with Saskatchewan folks. Um, a good a, a good question here, Lenore, is about physical product. And this is so different for, um, especially for, for different genres, you know, um, some genres can get away with manufacturing cassette tapes, whereas for others, that would be like the worst investment you could make. Um, so what's been your experience with, um, with, with physical product or purely digital? Like how, how do you go about that? How do you make those decisions? Well, I think um, for every artist, that's going to be a different answer. And so for us, what we do is try and look at who our audience is, because, um, you know, CDs, vinyl, cassette tapes, digital, those all appeal to different types of audiences. And um, so what we have done in the past is really look at who who is it who's coming to our shows? Who is it who's listening to our music? And we've tried to sort of parse out a little bit of what kind of format are they interested in purchasing? And so we have, uh, I think, I don't think this would be the case for every band, but we find ourselves in a position where we're very lucky to appeal to kids, surprisingly, <laughs> and also to, um, you know, like a baby boomer generation as well, and also everyone in between that. And so if we play um, at the Western Development Museum for like a seniors brunch, we are not going to sell any tapes at that show. We'll probably sell a bunch of CDs. Um, but if we play at um, Black Hat Tavern or if we play at Sled Island, we're probably going to sell a whole bunch of tapes. 
So what we have done as a band, because we do have these sort of micro audiences in all these various different age demographics, we produce uh, form the physical formats in in sort of a bit of each, basically. Oh. And we also monitor, we usually try not to purchase any physical format that is, you know, we're not going to buy a thousand tapes at a time or vinyl or CDs. We try and buy... Um, uh, quantities that we're not going to be sitting on or that won't end up in value village i think it's really good to um, start small and you know our goal is always to sell out not to have hundreds and hundreds of them in our basement so okay. you know we we kind of reproduce them as they run out so we do we tend to do shorter runs uh, more frequently rather mm -hmm. than really spending a lot on one format wow. so i say think about who your audience is yeah, and, and Lenore, um, for folks that don't know, um, you've done a lot of work with SAS Music, and SAS Music, you know, they're very familiar familiar with the programs that we offer at Creative Saskatchewan, and although, um, you know, as a program advisor, I'm here to help folks navigate our programs and talk about eligible and ineligible expenses and deadlines and all that kind of thing, but as far as you know, um, career plans and and project plans. Um, that's really where the folks at SAS Music come in. Not only the staff, but but the consultants. Um, so, um, wearing your your consultant hat, Lenore, if you were chatting with someone and they asked you, um, you know, what they should manufacture, if anything at all, where where do you start with them? I think, uh, well, these are the questions that absolutely happen in consults, uh, mm -hmm. which is great. And I really enjoy uh, being a consultant at SAS Music. And the conversations are kind of similar to the one we're having now. Um, I think um, another thing to really think about is what I would talk about with someone if we were having a coffee or a consult uh, is um, how often do you perform? Or what are your plans to perform? There's a lot of merch uh, and physical format really um, sells at the live shows and um, purchasing a lot of physical format. Uh, if you don't have plans to play live or tour, it can be uh, more difficult to to sell those copies. So one of the I would I would more navigate towards what what are your goals and and let that determine what sort of format you should get, how many, etc. Um, so that question I think has to come after thinking about what your goals are and where you want to go. Uh -huh. That's really great. We have another question here about Sask Arts um, because they support a lot of musicians within the province. And um, um, it is um, in our guidelines that uh, if if you receive support from Sask Arts, that you're ineligible to receive support from us um, because it's like we're, we're, we're sisters. We're, we're here to um, complement um, um, one another. So if someone receives support from SAS guards, does that just make them ineligible to us? Um, and that would be no, really. Um, it depends, I guess, what, what the um, activity is. If you receive a, 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 a grant from SAS guards to write an album, you can come to Creative Saskatchewan to record the album and you can come to us to market the album. But if it's exactly the same activity, then no, you're not eligible, but it's not often that there is that kind of kind of overlap. Um, and another question here is about um, capital expenditures um, versus what would be considered something specific to um, a project. So the question, I work in country music and stage wear um can i claim fees for stage outfits in my tour planning expenses or is that considered a capital expenditure and can a stylist be considered part of my team and i would say if the um if it's specific to a project um like say you're recording a music video um or it is specific to a performance then it would be an eligible expense and so would um, working with a stylist. If you hire a stylist um, to do um, a photography shoot, a music video, 
Um, absolutely. Um, what has your experience been, Lenore, as far as like have has have the carries done anything like that? Yeah, we have we've done with a few of our um export uh projects, I guess you can call them. Uh with a with a good number of them, we've also um had a marketing expense or tacked in uh with the eligibility to uh hire a photographer for uh, promotional uh reasons to uh you know promote yourself going to those places. And so I believe, Lisa, you can tell me exactly, but there's a certain amount, I think 10% maybe of the grant that is eligible towards those types of things. And so uh, the one thing that we have done on our uh, lots of showcase festivals that we've done sometimes is, is hire a photographer to be a piece of that to help with promotion. Mm -hmm. And that goes the it's same way with, uh, you know, you get a quote and you build that into the budget in the same way that you would any other expense. Mm -hmm. Um. So this, the next question is, is about um, multiple funders. So um, when touring, I hear of many artists that apply for both Creative Saskatchewan and Factor funding. Does this apply to all touring or just export emissions? Can you explain which grants go together, the timeline for applying to each funder? Um, and we see a lot of applications where folks um, apply to both, to be honest. Um, a lot of the time, the factor funding isn't confirmed by the time at the time of, of an application to Creative Saskatchewan, um, which is which is fine. Um, we just you know do our best to ensure that the project isn't overfinanced, um, that what you're asking for from Creative Saskatchewan and from Factor doesn't exceed your expenses. Um, but typically, folks will cover the other fifty percent. Um, and then if factor funding is received, that money goes to reimburse their portion. Um, but it can be a bit of a juggling, like, you know, with factors, sometimes folks get funding that they can do multiple things with. Sometimes it's specific to just one, one project. Um, of course, deadlines really um, rarely match up. But Lenore, what has your, been exp your experience been when it comes to factor in Creative Saskatchewan or even fund other funding agencies? Hmm. Well, in terms of like the funding we've received in the past, I can count, I checked before and there's been 13 different showcases over the past several years that we've been lucky to receive funding through Creative Saskatchewan. And for every single one of those, we've also applied for factor funding. So when I apply for um, a grant through Creative Saskatchewan, especially if it's for a showcase festival, and that, so this is, this is separate from uh, a touring grant, um, as soon as we receive an invitation or a confirmation that the, that you've been invited, then that's my trigger to really start getting going on the grants. And so what I do is really prioritize that above anything else. We're not talking about where we're going to go, uh, eat in that city when we get there or what bands we want to see. We're talking about how are we going to get there? And the financial capacity is the biggest piece. And so there's a creative Saskatchewan sort of has specific templates where you provide the narrative and then the budget and factor also has its own template but what you can do is um, build a very strong narrative and then you can uh, use that to plug in on your factor grant as well so you do kind of have to write two different grants but it's the same narrative and so you don't have to write two things uh, two separate grants twice um, but that's what we do is always always doing both and so it does mean you have to have two applications. It does mean you have to have two reports, but it also means that you're able to go and experience this really cool opportunity. And, and so that's something that, especially for showcase festivals, for me or for us has just become a, a normal um, piece of it all. And uh, SOCAM is also um, a funding body that we have also access funding from, especially when we've been to some countries in Scandinavia, for example, that are quite expensive especially flights now are more expensive than they used to be. So I've been applying for SOCAN funding more frequently in the past couple of years um, since COVID has allowed us to travel again because the expenses have gone up. So sometimes for these festivals, there's um, three different applications that um, I will put together in order for us to get to go. So I definitely, um, it's very rare that it's just one grant I'm applying for for a project. Mm -hmm. 
many hats. Um, we have um, just under five minutes left and we, I apologize, but we're not gonna get to all the questions, but just so you know, um, you can book a consultation with Creative Saskatchewan, any one of our program advisors, just go to the website and get, to, get in touch with us. We're happy to meet with you via Zoom or a phone call. Um, you can also email us with your questions. And if you want to talk about, um, you know, more nuts and bolts of the business and project plans and that kind of thing, um, Lenore and lots of the good folks at SAS Music, they're, they're there to help. Um, there is such a strong network of support in this province, and it's really encouraged um, for folks to take advantage of it because that's what it's there for, um, and, and there's so much of it. Um, there is a quick question here about um, fast tracking. Um, so if you have um, confirmed factor funding um, by the time you apply to Creative Saskatchewan, um, this applies to sound recording and tour. Um, you, you bypass the assessment process um, and you can be fast tracked. So just a heads up, um, as I said, not often do you know if you have factor of financing or not by the time you apply to Creative Saskatchewan, but if you do, there is that fast um, tracking um, um, in effect. Um, so before we go, Lenore, um, um, I just want to say a big congratulations to you guys, like the amount of showcasing and, and activity that you're all undertaking is so impressive. Um, before we go, is there anything um, that you, words of wisdom you want to impart on our listeners and viewers today? Yeah, well, I just want to say thank you so much, Lisa, to, for, to you for having me today and also to Creative Sask for helping the Garys to experience any of the successes that we have uh, had in the past. Uh, we could not do anything we do without the support of Creative Sask. Um, and also, uh, yeah, reach out to, to Creative Saskatchewan and to um, uh, Sask Music if you have questions because there are people there set up to help you succeed. And that's exactly how we got started was by reaching out to folks and asking for help. And that's exactly what we received. And um, if you don't receive a grant, that doesn't mean your project isn't, isn't good or capable. It just means you didn't receive it this time. We've applied, I've applied for so many grants that I haven't received, um, but you you keep failing forward and keep keep using that to um, just keep uh, keep trying. It, uh, it's not a reason to give up if you are denied a grant. Uh, it's just a reason to continue working on it. Mm -hmm. For sure. I mean, I think it's important for everyone to know um, you know, there, there is limited funding available. We, we work with X amount of dollars that, that we receive and, um, you know, it's, it's a competitive process. That's for sure. Um, typically a lot of applications are received from folks, um, all over the province. And, um, so just by, by pure numbers, there's going to be people who don't receive funding and it's not because your, your application or your activity isn't great. Um, it's just, you know, competitive and there isn't enough, enough money, but, um, that being said, there, there is, um, room for a lot of, um, folks that are just getting their start in the business to get support too, you know, um, you don't have to be a, a superstar to get support. You just have to have a really good plan, um, that's impactful and a good application, um, so we encourage folks to get in touch with SAS Music. Um, maybe you'll be lucky enough to talk to Lenore and have a, a consult. Yeah, you could absolutely request a consult and I'd be happy to have a chat with you via Zoom or over coffee somewhere or something. Mm -hmm. And then just last question, um, good timing. Once a band becomes financially sustainable, do they become ineligible for funding? Um, and no, um, at, at this time, um, uh, no, um, anyone can apply to us. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Lenore. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And I wish you continued success in everything that you all do. Thanks so much. Thanks, Lisa. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And like I said, um, book a consult if you, um, want to chat. Um, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.